All right, everyone, welcome back to the Daddy Show. Doing another auto repair vehicle, this time not on a 2013 Nissan Altima. It's actually on a 2013 Chevy Suburban um, LT 5.3 liter V8. And I'm working on the oil pressure sensor, and uh, I'm gonna show you where that's at and how to replace it. Actually, very simple to do. A little bit of a pain in the butt to get to, but it's simple process. So. I'm gonna walk you through it here and uh, hope you enjoy. Some men rise, some men fall. Some help others to reach the top, while others stand watch. Who are we? We are the risk takers. We are the fighters. The regular everyday men, the downtrodden and the uprisen. And this is The Daddy Show. Alrighty, so looking at the top of the engine here, got this beautiful Vortec plastic cover on this one. Um, again, this is a 2013 5.3 liter V8 in the Chevy Suburban. <clears throat> the sensor I'm changing out is this little guy right here, and I've cheated and already taken it out, and uh, it was actually pretty easy. It was easier than I thought it was going to be. So, I'll show you the process. I grab right here under this and pull it up it takes a little bit of a little bit of force to pull it up it's actually a lot easier to put back in um, just set that off to the side so we're looking at the top of the engine here the sensor is going to be all the way in the back so <clears throat> here's all the tools that i grabbed and i didn't use any of them these are the tools i used i've got an inch and sixteenth six point socket with a half inch to three eighths drive adapter, just because that's the size drive ratchet I have with a flexible head on it. <clears throat> so that's very important, very handy. If you don't have one, I recommend getting one. Um, made this job a lot easier too. Could have been done without the flex head, but it did make it a lot easier. So those are the one, two, three tools that I used to get this sensor out. So, I'm going to show you how I did that. <clears throat> I got my handy dandy notebook. Bow, 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 bow. LED camp light here. And I just set it right back there. Up there. Now you can see it. So I just set it right back there on the back of the engine. And uh, just kind of resting against the firewall. And on top of that uh, hose here going to the uh, brake master cylinder. So, let me crawl in here. Put my... Now, I'm guessing if you have a diesel, this uh, battery plate over here is probably for a second battery for a diesel engine. This is not a diesel. This is gas. So, um, all right. So, you've got these two lines here, which are some vacuum lines, I believe. I'm not an expert on this engine, um, but just based on what they're made out of and everything, they look like little vacuum lines to me. But um, you got the fuel line right here. This guy right here and uh i am actually able to go over the top of my arms right here to get down in that hole so i'm going to show you what that hole down there looks like and so down there right at the top of my finger in the screen that silver shiny hole down there that's where the sensor came out of and See if I can reach my hand down in there. Let me get the wiring harness out for you. I've got it tucked back behind the engine so it's out of the way. There we go. And there we go. So there's the top of the wiring harness that goes onto it. So I just feel my way around in there. I'm just feeling my way around in there and moving it back behind. The engine between the engine and the firewall just to get it out of my way so made it a lot easier to get it out and uh so yeah that's how i got it out it was actually really easy to do so i'm going to put the new one in and uh once i get that in by hand i'll show you what that looks like with the ratchet on the socket with the socket on the sensor and that way you can see kind of what it, what it looks like and how i got everything in there so um anyway okay real quick i wanted to try to film where my arm's at 
I don't know if you can see my hand. You can see the top of my hand just barely moving around back there. Um, I'm just feeling the hole, putting the new sensor in, just taking my time, making sure threads are lined up because this is a aluminum piece on the sensor. The sensor is made out of aluminum and the part of the engine I'm screwing it into is also aluminum. So you want to make sure your threads are lined up. So I'm doing that all by hand. And once I got two, three threads in, it got really stiff. That's because there is thread sealant on the new sensor already. So show you where that sensor's at. There it sits. So without anything plugged in, it's not tightened up yet. So I'm gonna get the socket on it and get it tightened up. All right, now I've got the socket on top of the sensor and I'm screwing it in by hand. It's a little tight, but it's actually going fairly well with that sealant on there on the threads. And so I want to make sure 100% that nothing's cross-threaded and it's not. So it's it's going well. It's tight, but it's turning easily. And I can tell it's just the uh, the friction of the sealant holding me up, not, not threads that are bound up. So we're good to go. So there's the socket with the half inch to three inch adapter on top. I'm going to get the ratchet in there, show you what that looks like. So you can kind of see where that's at way back there. Okay, we are back with the ratchet. Now what I did is I had to kind of warm it up underneath here a little bit, spin it around backwards so I can turn it and get underneath, underneath all that stuff. And oh, I got lucky. It lined up pretty much. No, it didn't. Darn it. That's close. This ratchet I've got has has a ring right here that allows you to turn it so you can get things lined up when you're in a tight spot. So it's very handy. All right, let me get it back in there. Show you how that's done again. Up underneath here so I don't tear up the lines too much, stretch them or anything. All right, let's get her on in there. Sorry, I'm trying to film and do this at the same time. It's not going well. And we got it. There it went. All right, so there's how my ratchet's sitting on top of the adapter in the socket on top of the sensor. And you'll notice I've got the ratchet over the top of the fuel line underneath these two vacuum hoses. All right, I've got to move my light so I don't crush it. So, sorry, I don't have much light now, but now I'm going to just slowly work the ratchet. I don't know if you can tell in this lighting, but you can, let me, sh now let me get some light in there for you, sorry. You can see that angle on the ratchet at that knuckle. You can see where it's, how it's uh, bent up this way, not down like that, it's up like this. I wanna make sure that the socket stays as straight on the uh, sensor as possible. So that's why I've got it cranked up a little bit and just gonna try to make sure as I pull that I'm pulling it as straight as I possibly can. And uh, eventually, I'm going to have to switch to two hands here to make sure I keep it nice and, and straight. So I will finish this up and I will come back and uh, wrap up with you here. Okay, I'm back. I got that tightened down and I got the socket and everything pulled out and there's the sensor. Just have to plug in the, the uh, wire harness. We'll be good to go. And, uh, you know, something like this could happen. I got uh, my hand caught on something while I was doing it and uh, cut me a little bit, no big deal. Nothing I haven't done before, I've had worse. All right, so I'm gonna reach back, find my wire. My wiring harness is right, if I can get it to focus back there. Yeah, there it is, there's the end of the wiring harness. So I'm gonna plug that in 
down on top of the sensor. I'm gonna make sure my gray piece is pulled up. Oh, so I'll, I'll show you how that works. I totally forgot to mention that. Oh, there it is. There it went. Okay, I got it in. Now, so it's gonna be hard to show you here, I think. At the back side, you see in the middle, get my finger out of the way, trying to focus on that. In the middle of that wiring harness is a blue piece towards the back of the engine, closer to the firewall, um, at least the way this is plugged in, um, there's a tan piece. That tan piece um, is plastic. You just pull up on it, grab it with both sides with your fingers, and it pulls up really easy. And then in the center of it, there's a, a little tab you have to push in. So you push in that tab and then pull up on the harness at the same time and that will free it from the sensor. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I will try to demonstrate on this guy right here. It's nothing like this, but this is the best way I can show. So that tan piece, let's say the tan piece is sitting right here. You grab it like this, you pull up on the tan piece and then in the middle, there's a piece you push. And then so you push in and pull up at the same time and it'll come out. It takes a little work. You gotta be patient, just take your time and uh, you'll get it. So then when you push it back in, just push the whole sensor or whole harness back on the sensor and then make sure that tan piece gets pushed back down into place so that it looks like that. And you're good. Once you hear it click in place, you get the tan piece back down you're good to go. All right, well, hopefully that helps. This is a, uh, again, a 2013 engine. Um, I watched a video from one guy. He said, um, well, he didn't say, but his description included 2013 as the top range for the engines he was showing. That one that he showed had a slightly different oil sensor than this engine has. I found that out because I ordered the part number that he gave, and it was not right. I looked at the, once I looked back here and pulled the, uh, the wiring harness off of this one, I realized that the connection at the top was completely different. So I found a harness that was, or a, a part that was the same as what I needed um, because I was able to use the light back there and I stuck my camera back there so I couldn't see with my eyes, but using the camera, I was able to see the part number on top of the original sensor. And so that's how I found out what part number I needed. So I ordered that on Amazon, got it for like 30 bucks, I think and uh and was able to, to change it here in let's see total time actually without filming total time actually working on the vehicle was probably 15 minutes taking the old part out and putting the new one in it was very very easy so um don't pay someone a ton of money unless you have to i mean unless you don't know what you're doing um if you don't know what you're doing you have major questions you're afraid you're going to completely screw it up pay somebody to do it um but Otherwise, consult your owner's manual, consult a licensed mechanic, but if you can do something like this yourself, hopefully this helps you, and uh, definitely save yourself some money if you can. So, that's all I got. I'm going to show you the part number for the one I got for this engine, and uh, hopefully that'll help you out. So, Alright, if you're watching videos on YouTube, and you come across a part that uh, looks similar to this, but has a thinner neck and a bigger opening at the top, or a same size opening at the top, but a thinner neck um, that doesn't quite look like this, you've probably got the wrong part. So this is the one that I found for this engine, and this one was sitting in at the back of the engine just right to where I was able to get my camera in there to see that this is the part number. I know that doesn't exactly match, but that part number is a string of numbers that match with this part number and it's exactly the same part it has the same three tabs the same set of knobs here to make sure the harness fits correctly and it has it's literally the exact same thing so um that's what i needed and that's what i got so again here is the part number for the one that came out and here's what i was able to find as the replacement get that shine off of there for you there you go one two six seven three one three four and uh that's what worked for me all right everyone sorry i got a lot of glare there Jeez, got a few bikes in the background eh all right so i sound canadian i'm not i'm not canadian at all <laughs> uh 
but I do play hockey and I coach hockey. So I'm around people who are Canadian or at least from Northern United States. And they say a boat and things like that. So I sometimes say my O's kind of funny once in a while. So you'll catch me doing that. Anyway, this is the daddy show. That was the video on the 2013 Suburban, as you can see here in the background. Suburban. I don't know how the weather people do that. How do you watch a camera and then kind of point to the right stuff, the right direction? That takes practice. Kudos. Anyway, this is the vehicle. I did test it out. Uh, we have perfect oil pressure after replacing the sensor. Um, it fluctuates up and down with the engine RPM, and it shows correctly on the gauge. So we're good to go. So the part was perfect. We got no leaks. Everything's great. So that's that. This is my outro. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is helpful for you. Hope it helps. Hopefully, sorry. I hope it helps you save some money. And uh, obviously, if you're not able to do these kind of repairs yourself, don't feel comfortable, don't know what you're doing, don't want to break anything, obviously pay somebody to do it if you have to. But if you are the kind of person who wants to do it in your driveway, in your garage, wherever you can, um, hopefully this helps you get it done. So this is The Daddy Show. We'll see you in the next video.